Hello, and welcome to episode 32 of Michael Reads from a Book, the series in which I read from a book. Today's book is The Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, and the book that launched Western literature. Exciting! Alright, we're going to read from... Book 7. I see the problem with this immediately. These words are foreign and hard to pronounce. Uh, when Odysseus was praying in the grove, the strong mules bore Nausicaa to the city. She pulled up at the gate of her father's palace, and her brothers, men like gods, crowded around, unhitched the mules, and took the clothes inside. Nausicaa went to her bedroom, where Yuri Medusa... That sounds like a name that Bart Simpson would make up to call um, Greek Mo. But her waiting woman kindled a fire for her. Your Medusa had come from a pier in the curved ships long ago and had been chosen from the spoils of war for Alcinous, who ruled the Phocians as if he were a god. It was this old woman who had reared white-armed Nausicaa in the palace and who now prepared her supper on the fire. As Odysseus started out for the city, Athena enveloped him in, a, in magic mist, so that none of the Phocians he might meet along the way would challenge him and ask who he was. He was about to enter the lovely city when the gray-eyed one came up to him. She looked like a young girl carrying a pitcher, standing there before him, and godlike Odysseus questioned her. My child, I wonder if you could guide me to the house of Alcinous, the man who is lord of this people. I am a traveler from a land far away, a stranger in need, and I know no one in this city. Athena's eyes flashed in the blue sea light. Well, of course, Grandad, I'll show you where Alcinous lives. His house is close to ours. Come on, I'll lead the way, but you'll have to be quiet. Don't look at anyone or ask any questions. These people here aren't very tolerant of strangers or very welcoming. All they trust are their ships, in which they cross the great ocean because Poseidon lets them. Their ships are very fast, fast as a flying bird, or even a thought. Then thus Pallas Athena, and she led the way, quickly, while Odysseus followed in the goddess's footsteps. None of the Phocians noticed him as he moved through their city, for the dread goddess had her, her hair done up in braids, okay, would not allow them shedding around him a magical mist that made him invisible. She had a soft spot in her heart for the hero. Odysseus marveled at the harbors and the shapely ships, at the meeting grounds and the long walls capped with palisades. When they came to the king's palace, the great I one was the first to speak. Here you are, Grandad, the house you asked for. You will find the lords feasting at a banquet. Go inside and don't be afraid of anything. Things turn out better for a man who is bold, especially if it's a stranger from a distant land. The first person you'll meet here is the queen. Erete is her name, and she's from the same line as King Alcinous. It goes like this. First, Nos oh, God. first Nothesus was born from Poseidon, and Periboa, a most beautiful woman, the youngest daughter of Eurymedon, who was once the king of arrogant giants. He brought destruction down on his pe reckless people and on himself. Well, anyway... Poseidon lay with Periboa, and she bore a son, Nausithaus, who ruled the Phocians. Nausithaus fathered Rexenor and Elsinus. Rexenor had just got married when Apollo shot him with his silver bow in his hall. He didn't leave a son, but he did leave a daughter, only one, Arete. Elsinus married her and honored her as no other woman on earth is honored. All of the women who keep house for their husbands, that's how she's honored, from the heart and always has been. So he married his niece, is that what we're... All right, ancient Greeks, we'll just, we'll just keep moving. From the heart and always has been, both by her children and by Alcinous himself, as by the people who look to her as a goddess and greet her as one when she goes through the city. She understands everything and has sound judgment and settles quarrels with a generous heart. If she likes you, there's a very good chance you will get to see your dear ones again in the high-roofed hall in your own native land. 
Gus the goddess with his sea gray eyes. Yeah, he did marry her. Okay. I mean, wasn't that the whole, like, plot of... And then she was off in the desolate water, leaving lovely Sheria. She came to Marathon and the wide street of Athens and disappeared into the great house of Erechtheus. What are we doing for time? All right, that's about long enough. Right. That was possibly the most boring book of the Odyssey I could have picked to read something from. We could have had harpies, we could have had cyclopses, we could have had Circe transforming dudes into pigs, but no. We had Odysseus chatting it up with the goddess, I guess. All right. Well, we'll go for something more exciting next time. So long.